Hey guys, it's Bill Hinckley, Flight Doc with UC Health Air Care and Mobile Care and current president of AMPA. And today we're going to be talking about the bougieated crank, or as our friends across the pond like to call it, the scalpel bougie technique. So this man is not doing well. He needs innovated. I can't innovate him. I can't oxygenate him. I've already tried all this stuff. It's all failed, and all that's left is a crank. So I've rehearsed this in my head many times. I'm ready to move to the crank without any hesitation. And I've got my crank kit out here. I've got everything I need, basically. Just a scalpel, a tray cook, a dilator, a $6 bougie, and a 6 et tube. So, my friend, it's time for you to get cut. So the key principle of this technique is that once we get metal in the lumen of that trachea, we're going to refuse to relinquish control of the lumen of that trachea uh, until we've got a tube in it. So I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm feeling my landmarks here. I've got my thyroid cartilage, got my cricothyroid membrane, got my cricoid cartilage. I've got control of that thyroid cartilage with my non-dominant hand. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my vertical cut through the skin. About three centimeters long. And at this point in time, this procedure is completely blind. It's a lot of blood. It doesn't matter how careful I am with my cut, it's going to be blind. So, I am feeling the cricothyroid membrane, and I can feel exactly where it is. Now I'm going to take my scalpel again, and this time I'm going to make a horizontal cut through the cricothyroid membrane. I want to point south just a little bit so that I don't end up lacerating the cords. And I'm going to make a stab incision through the cricothyroid membrane's inferior part uh, just over the cricoid cartilage. Okay, so now I have cut to air. I've got metal in the lumen of that trachea, and I am not going to relinquish control of that throughout the rest of the procedure. So now I'm going to switch hands here, and I'm going to grab my tray hook, and I am going to slide it in alongside the blade, and it doesn't matter to me if you point it south and you pick up the cricoid cartilage, or you point it north and you pick up the thyroid cartilage. Either way is good. Either way, you are lifting that trachea up out of the bloody hole. So I've still got control of the lumen of that trachea. Now I'm going to take my dilator, and I'm just going to poke it in there, and I'm going to dilate. Some people like to use their pinky finger to dilate. Some people like to use the blunt end of the blade. Really doesn't matter, but you've got to dilate it with something. Next, I'm going to take my bougie. I'm going to move up to the head of the bed, and I'm going to slide that bougie on in. And I'm getting washboarding as I go. And now I've got hold up, so I know I'm in the trachea. So at this point, I can remove my tray hook. I'm going to go ahead and grab my 6-O-E-T tube. I'm going to slide that on in, and I just need to, to get it in so that the balloon is in the trachea. I can pull my bougie back out. Go ahead and blow up my balloon. And I'm ready to go. So in summary, the, the main principle that I want everybody to take away is that you cut to air, and then once you've got the tip of that scalpel in the lumen of the trachea, you're going to refuse to relinquish control of the lumen of that airway until you've got a tube in it that you can breathe through. The whole key to a crank, in the thing that's going to determine when you need to do it in real life, whether or not you're going to be successful, is how often you have practiced it for real and how often you have practiced it in your head. So, rehearse mentally, refuse to relinquish control of that airway, and as they say in the Marines, when you're doing this procedure, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. We'll see you later.